Hello Audacious Church and Audacious Christians everywhere. I hope today's a good day for you. Even if it starts with difficulty, I think the devotion will show you that things can change. Have you ever felt that you've let someone down? You didn't mean to, but somehow circumstances overtook things. Today, I would like to look at one of those situations with the disciples. I'm glad the disciples were ordinary people who made mistakes because that lets me into the party. Before Jesus died, he told the disciples that after the resurrection, he would meet them in Galilee. Had the disciples forgotten? I don't know. About two weeks after the resurrection, we find seven of them one evening by the shores of Galilee. And Peter decided he was going fishing. Why did he decide to go to fish that night? Was it that he needed food for his family? Or was it that he needed some fish to sell in the business? Or was he fed up and he wanted a night out with the boys? I really don't know, but seven of them set off onto the lake. But the guy's night went downhill from there on. As they were bringing the boat in at dawn, they were definitely fed up and tired because the boat was empty. Not one fish. Now, because I was a nurse and a midwife, I know about night shifts and I know that they can make you very, very tired. In fact, the feeling of tiredness is totally overwhelming sometimes and I've got on a bus and gone to sleep and missed my stop. And when I've driven home in the car, sometimes I couldn't remember getting in the car or getting out till I got in the house. That's a bit worrying, but that's how tired you can feel. So I understand how the disciples felt that morning when they hadn't got anything for their labours overnight. As they're coming towards the shore in the boat, they see that somebody is standing on the shoreline. The person called to them, and he says, hey guys, have you caught any fish? Nothing, they reply. Then Jesus tells the fishermen where the catch is. The result being that the net was so heavy, they couldn't pull it in. John looks at Peter and he says, it's the master. At that, Peter was in the sea swimming to his Lord. When they all got to Jesus, he had a barbecue ready on the beach and he was roasting fish for them and there was bread and he instructed them to bring some of the fish that they'd caught. You see, that is amazing. Jesus serving them, saying, let's have breakfast. You see, the first thing I noticed from this story is that Jesus kept his promise. He met them in Galilee. God always keeps his promises. He promised right at the beginning that he would send a Messiah to redeem his people. And he did. He sent his son, Jesus, so that we could have salvation from our sins. And God has promised that he will never leave us. The preachers tell me that in Greek, this verse has a triple lock. And it says he will never Never, never leave us. What a promise that is. And Jesus kept his promise to the disciples that he would be there in Galilee. And then the next thing is, we see that Jesus met their physical needs before addressing their spiritual needs. Now, my mom told me that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. It might not be so much now because we seem to have loads of male chefs in the home these days. But when I was going out with my husband, it certainly worked with him. So Jesus served them breakfast. Isn't that amazing? Jesus knew these guys were tired and hungry and he met that physical need. Just as he did with the 5,000 when the boy gave his lunch of fish and bread. 
Fish and bread must have been a gourmet meal in Galilee at that time. He was the same Jesus who had actually washed their feet before he went to the cross. Jesus was serving as well as preaching. And Jesus knows that it's easier to listen to somebody when they've taken time with you beforehand. The third thing I noticed was that Jesus didn't wait for them to find him. He went and found them. Jesus is always looking for us, even when we fail him. And sometimes when people fail us, we don't want to see them again. We may not even want to talk to them. Jesus wasn't like that. Before his death, he had warned Peter that Satan wanted to test his faith. In Luke, the verse is saying, 22, Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I am about to tell you. Satan has tried his best to separate you from me, but I have prayed for you that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. So I noticed their failure didn't affect God's plan for their lives. Jeremiah tells us that God's plans for us are good and give us a future and a hope. And Jesus wanted the disciples and Peter back on track. So if you failed in some way, take your failure to the cross. Restore your relationship with God and get back on track. Fourth thing I noticed was he addressed their spiritual needs. He wanted to have a chat with Peter. It was obvious from this passage that although Peter had got it all wrong about the time of Jesus' death, there was no lack of desire within him to see Jesus. He'd run to the tomb when the women had delivered the message of the resurrection. When he was in the boat with John and they saw someone on the beach and John said, it is the Lord, Peter dived straight into the water and swam to Jesus. And after breakfast, Jesus asks him three times, do you love me? Have you told Jesus that you love him recently? I have a friend who's been married for 40 years and she asked her husband one day if he loved her. And he said, I told you when I married you that I loved you. And if anything changes, I'll let you know. I thought that was very sad. She only wanted to hear from him that he loved her and he couldn't even bring himself to say the, those words. So tell somebody in your life today that you love them. It's so important. And don't forget to tell Jesus you love him too. The last thing is Peter. Jesus encouraged Peter that despite his failure, he was still God's choice for the future. It's so easy to write people off when they've failed, when in fact, we've all failed sometimes. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says that we are just like common clay pots, but within us, we carry the glorious message, the glorious treasure of God's truth. His message to Peter was about feeding sheep and lambs. He wanted him not only to be a spiritual fisherman, pulling in a spiritual net, but Jesus wanted him to be a shepherd of the people of God. Once Peter had been filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he was empowered for everything that was to come, and he was transformed. In conclusion, remember, Jesus keeps his promises. Remember, Jesus looked for Peter and he looks for us too. Jesus served the disciples and Jesus let Peter know that failure didn't exclude him. So if you feel you failed, remember, Jesus comes to us and he says, do you love me? When you've answered Jesus' question, Take time and let the Holy Spirit fill and empower you for the next stage of your journey. And don't forget to join us in church on Sunday, either Central Manchester, Chester, 
north or south location, we're waiting for you. It's such a joy to be worshipping together again and listening to God's word. There is no substitute for gathering together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we fail you sometimes and we are really sorry for that. And we are so blessed because you continually forgive us and lift us again. So, Lord, help us to rise, to be the people you want us to be, the people you planned for us to be. And may we take time to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you, audacious church. Hope your day is a good one.